After many months of extensive patience and ever-expanding excitement, Season 8 of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is finally upon us. And with the two-parter School Days, perhaps the greatest change to the status quo in the entirety of the show's history. Except maybe Alicorn Twilight. Still, adding so many new characters all at once while giving each of the main characters a new role is a bold move for a long-running series. It is quite apparent from this premiere that this school of friendship is going to be a consistent theme for the upcoming season. Whether that means the majority of upcoming stories, or perhaps only coming up every few episodes or so, I'm not entirely sure just yet, but it is an effective way of getting this year of MLP to stand out a bit more from all the previous seasons. And I will admit I am intrigued by where the writers intend to take this story angle in the long run. But what about this premiere as just a standalone two-parter? Let's have a look-see. We begin with... Exposition. Quite a bit of it, actually, making sure that everyone is caught up on the events of the movie and how it affects the series on the whole. Which would be okay, except I can't help but feel that Hasbro is subtly pushing a message of... Psst! Hey, did you see the movie? Did you know we released a movie? You should really go watch the movie. Hint, hint. Anyways, I was actually surprised to hear a very familiar voice out of Naysay from the EEA. I don't know about the rest of you, but I could immediately recognize what other characters I've heard that voice out of. Chief Ray, what do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The Pinky and the Brain. Yes, Pinky and the Brain. One is a genius, the other's insane. I'm sure I'm far from the only person who thought of that joke when watching this premiere, but it's just too funny not to bring up. Now, as for each of these new characters the MLP staff have brought in, they're cute. They're quite distinct from each other in how they interact and what they care about. They each had at least one moment where they could endear themselves to the audience and not just introduce themselves as a new character. It's still too early to really form much of an opinion, as even with a two-parter, there's just not enough screen time to get anything more than a scant few personality quirks considering how many different characters are each vying for space. Kind of like with the season one premiere for the main six, where we got a base idea on what each character was like, but it took subsequent episodes to really dive into their passions and motivations. So I'm expecting to see something similar for each of these characters in future episodes this coming year. But given the 20 plus characters that each had speaking roles in this season 8 premiere, it's actually a bit impressive that the writers managed as much with these new characters as they did. With that said, I will admit that many of the story beats are pretty easy to see coming, with only a few surprises here and there along the way. We know that Twilight and company are going to get in over their heads. We know that Naysay is going to be a stick in the mud for the rules. We know that the students really needed to reach out on their own to form a bond rather than having the adults do so for them. It's really not hard to see that Naysay is going to insult the other races to the point where tensions are going to split alliances. However... I will admit that keeping Naysay firm in his belief that this school of friendship is a bad idea right to the end is actually more interesting than the standard heel turn we've gotten so used to with antagonists in MLP. It keeps the option open for him to return as an antagonist in future stories. And frankly, from what little we've seen of his personality and motivations, it really wouldn't take much for him to stir up conflict. Plus, I really appreciate Twilight's message of how we do something is not as important as why we do it. I also admit that having all the youngsters hiding out at the castle of the two sisters was a nice touch. For a while, I was worried that the MLP staff might have forgotten that place even existed. Though, once again, it would appear that the Everfree Forest is just no longer a real threat if these bush woolies are the most dangerous encounter they come across. Fun fact, though, these little guys are actually another callback to a Generation 1 creature, something I didn't realize until after I watched the episode. 
But as expected for the ending, everyone comes together, at least most everyone. The school is reopened and the stage is set for the rest of the season to come. And all in all, this premiere is, in my opinion, good. Not what I'd call a great entry in the series, as I can't really think of a reason as to why I'd go back and watch it again now that I know everything that's happened. Except for maybe a few of the more unexpected laugh-out-loud moments. But at the same time, its greatest strength lies in how much it has changed the status quo of the show without really upsetting any of the balance. This is a very interesting setup for stories to come. Expanding further upon the world, introducing further potential for conflicts and resolutions between races, granting the main six new roles where they're being challenged, and for a few of them, even a natural progression for their character arcs. And I will say there is also a good deal of potential for these younger characters to take up the spotlight here and there. Shake things up a bit, so to speak. Certainly more so than nearly any other premiere or finale in the series up to this point. Plus, I really love the fact that the writers are bringing in all these new locations, creatures, and background details while the animators are keeping up with so much flair. Every year the show continues to improve its presentation, and that's just more icing on the cake. I eagerly await seeing what the MLP staff have in store for us for Season 8. But what did you think about this two-parter premiere? Given all the changes they've introduced to the status quo, how many of these elements do you think are going to improve or perhaps detract from the My Little Pony we've grown so used to over the years? Where do you suppose the story is headed given this extensive amount of setup? I would like to hear your thoughts on School Days, and here's looking forward to many more episodes that introduce even more of the world of Equestria to explore. I am Dr. Wolf, and I look forward to hearing from you.